Taking a live look now at the Royal Jamaica Yacht Club near Kingston as the island of Jamaica braces for the storm. It's expected to pass very close to the island this afternoon. Now the storm has already killed six people in the Caribbean as it passed over smaller islands earlier this week. Here's a look at satellite images showing before and after the storm hit the Kariakou Island in the Grenadines. It was a category four storm and you can see the damage left behind. Now this is a look as the storm moved through St. Lucia today. It's expected to strike Jamaica with devastating winds, damaging waves and life threatening flash flooding. Tom Hansen reports from Montego Bay. From the Caribbean, a sail drone's close-up view of hurricane barrels, intense winds and rough waves churning toward Jamaica. It comes after barrel tore across parts of the Caribbean earlier this week, including the Dominican Republic on Tuesday as the sea barreled into Santo Domingo's coast. And newly released satellite images draw a stark contrast before and after the storm's impact on the affected islands. The situation is grim, uh, there is no power, uh, there's almost complete destruction of uh, homes and buildings. Oh my God. Here in Jamaica, people packed grocery stores yesterday to stock up on food and water ahead of the storm's arrival. Jamaica must take this hurricane seriously. Last night, the country's prime minister urged people to have emergency plans and brought attention to the role of climate change in creating a historically large storm for this time of year. Our region bears the brunt of the impacts of climate change. The hurricane further highlights the urgent need for global climate action. Definitely not the uh, vacation either of us envisioned, to say the least. Added Jane and his sister Ayushi traveled to Montego Bay from Philadelphia with their parents a few days ago. Now the family is sheltering in place at their Airbnb and called the experience frightening. We got some food, we got water, um, kind of just hope for the best. There's really nothing we can do at this point. And for travelers trying to get out of Jamaica and out of the path of this storm, that window has closed because the airport is closed until the hurricane warning is lifted. Now, after Beryl moves through Jamaica, it will set its sights on the Yucatan Peninsula. That's where Beryl is headed next. Tom Anson, CBS News, Montego Bay, Jamaica. Tom, thanks so much. Now, and forecasters are still tracking what effects this storm could have in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the update from just over an hour ago from the National Hurricane Center. We're expecting barrel to move over the Gulf of Mexico as we go from late Friday into the weekend uh, as a tropical storm initially, but expected to re-strengthen to a hurricane in the uh, western Gulf and uh, potentially affect northeastern Mexico, south Texas as we go from Sunday into Monday. So these areas will want to watch uh, with the potential for tropical storm conditions arriving uh, as early as Sunday morning. Pat, so much to talk about in today's forecast. What's the very latest on Hurricane Barrel? So we are working with the 10 a.m. advisory. The next one comes out in the uh, top of the next hour, so 1 p.m. We don't get a new forecast track with that. Our new forecast tracks come in at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. And then again, 12 hours after that, so 4 a.m., 10 a.m., right? So this is what we're working with right now. Category 4 hurricane. As of the 10 a.m. advisory, wind sustained at 145 miles per hour. There's the center of the storm here, just to the south of the western, excuse me, of the eastern tip of Jamaica. So this is going to be, if not a direct impact, a very, a very close impact here, a glancing blow as the storm moves to the west-northwest at about 18 miles per hour. So here's the forecast track as we go through the next uh, 24 to 36 hours continues to skirt the southern portion of the Grand Cayman Islands here as we get into tomorrow morning as a Category 3 hurricane. There is the expectation, though, that the storm weakens down to a Category 2 on approach to the Yucatan Peninsula, and that's because the storm is still dealing with a lot of wind shear in this part of the Caribbean. From there, the storm will continue to weaken down below Category 1 hurricane status as it moves over the Yucatan. A lot of land interaction there uh, contributing to that weakening. And then from there, it moves over the southern Gulf of Mexico. And notice... It emerges back over open water as a tropical storm as we get towards Friday evening and then re-strengthens by Sunday morning back to at least Category 1 hurricane status. And then from there, the big question is, will it stay in northern Mexico or does it take that sharp turn towards the north 
into South Texas. And now notice uh, Matagorda County is included in the edge of this forecast cone. The timing for this is Monday morning. So regardless of the track that the storm uh, takes, we could start to see impacts here as early as Sunday into Monday. For now, though, it's heat and haze. The 4th of July looks dry, but again, all eyes still on barrels. We go through the weekend. Here's your 4th of July forecast. Hot weather continues here. Temperatures upper 90s for tomorrow. For Thursday, we can make a run at 100 degrees as we get to Friday. Trace in a lot to talk about. We'll do a deeper dive on what to expect with Hurricane Barrel. And of course, your 4th of July forecast when I see it back here again in about 10 minutes. Wow, so much to watch. Pat, thanks. The KHOU 11 weather team continues to track barrel and no matter what happens with this storm, it's always a good time to review your family's hurricane plan. Get the KHOU 11 hurricane preparedness guide to help you do just that at khou.com hurricane.